All right, uh, we're on our last unit now. Uh, it's actually going to be two units combined together because they're both very short. So in chapter 8, um, I think it's chapter 8 in the textbook, uh, it's going to be about solving systems of equations. Um, and we're going to do it graphically first, and then we're going to and talk about what they mean, and then we're going to be looking at them algebraically. And then we're going to move on to chapter 9, and that's all about inequalities and how to deal with inequalities. Uh, so chapter 8 only has two lessons and chapter 9 only has three, so they're both going to go fairly quick. So it should be about five days and then we'll get ready for the test. Okay, uh, we've done systems of equations with linear ones in grade 10 quite a bit. Uh, and we've actually been looking at them again throughout this year. So we should be somewhat familiar with substitution and elimination methods. So this shouldn't be too surprising, this unit. It shouldn't catch us off guard. Um, but we're going to be looking at it with different types of functions now, is the only new thing. So what is a system of equations? Two or more equations involving the same variables being considered at the same time. So x and y, where x and y are representing the same thing in each equation. Uh, they can't be different things. That way they can be graphed on the same graph. A uh, system of a linear and a quadratic equation. So we're going to be looking at kind of two types. This is number one, this is number two. Uh, so this is going to be a linear versus a quadratic, and we know what that is kind of going to look like. So you could have a line, and you could have some kind of a quadratic. Uh, the graph involves a line and a parabola, and they're going to have points of intersection. Now, they could have no points of intersection. If my line was too far down, it would have none. It could have a single point of intersection, and very often they'll have two points of intersection when we're looking for it. So we'll have to find both those. A system of quadratic quadratic equations. So when two quadratics are involved, uh, and that's going to look something like this. So two different parabolas, and they're touching each other, and they could touch again in a number of different ways, and we'll talk about that in the future. There obviously could be one point or two points. Uh, there could be no points, um, and then there's also an infinite number one, which we'll talk about in a second. So a solution to a system of equations. When we say solution, what we're looking for is the values for the variables, any ordered pair, which satisfies every equation in the system. Uh, and we call these POIs, which is a point of intersection. So when do these two things actually touch each other? So the point 0.24 uh, is a solution to this system of equations. Uh, so we've got a line and we've got a parabola. First thing we'd like to do is number these so that we can actually tell them apart. So let's test number one at the point 0.24. So all we need to do is sub it in. So 4 is equal to 2 plus 2. So 4 is equal to 4. Uh, yes. I've just proven that the line travels through the point 2, 4. But in order to be a solution, the parabola also must travel through that point. So let's test it here as well. So 4 is equal to 2 squared. So 4 is equal to 4. Yep, that's true as well. So both the line and the parabola travel through this point, therefore it must be a solution. It must be a point of intersection between them. So very easy to check. Well, for these ones, that was a pretty easy equation. Number of solutions. A system of linear quadratic or quadratic quadratic equations may have no solution, one real solution, or two real solutions. A quadratic quadratic solution, a quadratic quadratic system of equations may also have an infinite number of solutions. Uh, and what do some of those look like? Well, no solution could look like this. Or it could look like this. Assuming the bottom curve is wider than the top curve. So we can have no solution pretty easy enough. Uh, one, I might not do all of these, would be when it touches it just at a tangent, say.
So it is possible for a line to actually touch the curve only at one point, and that would be a tangent line then. Um, I think I'll skip the quadratic quadratic one. It is possible. Well, an easy one would be like this. That would be one easy solution for that one, but there's many others. Uh, two. There are many ways. I'll skip those ones. Most of the time, there's probably going to be two solutions in these things. Uh, many, many of these things are going to touch twice. Most lines and parabolas that you could draw will probably touch twice. Um, there's probably an equal number of none solutions, but we don't think of them as often. But two is possible. And then infinite. That isn't even possible for the line quadratic. It's impossible to have an infinite number of uh, solutions. But quadratic quadratic is possible. And it would look like this. And now let's pretend I'm drawing another one. It's the same line. If it's the same line, there's an infinite number of touching points. So lots of possibilities. And we have to be aware of which ones they are. OK, relate a system of equations to a context. So Blythe Hartley of Edmonton, Alberta, is one of Canada's best springboard divers. Uh, she's doing training dives from a three meter springboard. Her coach uses video analysis to plot her height above the water. Which of the following systems could this represent? Could represent this scenario? Explain your choice and why the other graphs do not model it. So what do we know about this? Uh, we know very little. We know she's going to be diving. She's going to be diving into the water. Uh, and that she starts three meters up in the air. Um, we don't, we know that one of the curves probably is going to represent her actual height above the water. Well, we have height over time. So, um, the solid blue lines are going to represent her height over time. Uh, I don't think she just like falls into the water. That doesn't make sense. So I think B we can kind of rule out. It should be some kind of a dive. We know it should start at time zero in this context. Uh, but all these other ones start at time zero. So what's our other line? Well, it's light blue. It looks like it's going to be about the water. So if it's water, I think A can be out. Uh, water's not going to go down over time. So it's either C or D. And the trick is she starts three meters up in the air. So she does not start at water's height. She should start up in the air. System C. Uh, and I've kind of explained that choice. Interpret the points of intersection in this system of equations. Well, there's one of them. That's our point of intersection, and what does it stand for? Uh, when Blythe hits the water. Not a trick question. That's when she touches the water. That's when those two lines touch. Okay. Try another one like that. Two divers start their dives at the same time. One diver jumps from a one meter springboard and the other jumps from a three meter springboard. Their heights above the water are plotted over time. Which system could represent this scenario? Explain your choice and why the other graphs do not model it. All right. So one starts one meter above the water, the other starts three meters above the water. Uh, all of these are parabolas, um, so I assume these are our two different drive, uh, divers. Uh, one thing we can say right away is that we're probably going to model their dives at the same time. We're going to start zero as the time when they jump off the diving board. So we're not going to be doing it with system D. This is them both starting from the same height of the water and then jumping up at different times. No, it's definitely not going to be system D. Uh, similarly, system C, uh, they start at the same time, that's true, but they start at the same height as well, and we know they do not start at the same height. So it must be either A or B. Now both those have those same features, they both start at the same time, they both start at different heights. Uh, which one could it be? Um, there's kind of two things I can notice which makes me lead to uh, think that it's one over the other. The first thing I noticed is in B, the person that was down lower jumped really, really high. Like they almost got up to the same height as the person who started up high. Which is possible. And that's not to say it's impossible. But in this one, they both had similar heights on their jump. 
I think that's probably more likely. And then the better indicator is we know that the lower jumper has to be one meter in the air. Uh, and in this one, our lower guy is actually at the bottom at whatever probably water height is. So I don't think it's B. I think it should be system A. Explain why there's no point of intersection. The two divers were never at the same height at the same time. Uh, they would never actually travel through the same spot at the same time. If we had one of those really fancy digital overlays where we could see the one, the two divers um, and ghost images diving at the exact same moments, uh, those two images would never end up touching each other. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't overlap. So they're different. Okay, hopefully nothing too challenging so far. Uh, this part is going to be largely up to you guys. I think it's fairly straightforward, but I'm going to kind of leave it for an exercise for you guys. Uh, so solving these things graphically. This is the one everyone likes. We just pull out our graphing calculators and we see if we can graph it. So you're going to pull out your graphing calculators. You're going to go to the Y equals. And for Y1, you're going to enter in everything you see. And for Y2, you're going to enter in your second equation. So that's one and that's two. And then just press graph. You should get something. Uh, the first one is a line that kind of looks like this. And the second one is a parabola that looks something like this. Um, so pause the video if you need to enter those in and then see if you can find the point of intersection. So there's a way to calculate the point of intersection with your graphing calculator. Take a bit of time and try and find that point and that point. I'm going to write them down here. Uh, we'll round two. Does it say how much to round two? Let's just say, what, two decimal places? Uh, and I got something like that. So make sure you can find those things. Uh, and then it also wants you to verify your solution. So we would sub that into the original equations then. Um, we could probably pick just one of these. Let's pick this bottom one here and we'll sub it into the equations to solve it. So in equation number one, we would say four times my X value uh, minus my Y value plus three is equal to, uh, and check to make sure that's actually zero. We've rounded a bit, so it should be something just close to zero. Uh, and then we'll do again that again for 2. Um, and then 2 will say 2 times 0 0.58 squared plus 8 times 0 0.58 minus 5.33 plus 3. And what does that equal? And we'll find out if that equals 0. Um, I think we can just be satisfied with checking one of the points, making sure that we're on the right track here. So let's check that one. Uh, and I think that should work out just fine because I'm using Desmos and it never really lies to me. Okay, example three. Same thing here. 
graph it, uh, find the points of intersection, verify your solutions. So I would pause this and try this one on your own first. We only have one more question after this one. Um, and I'm going to start drawing out the solutions in about two seconds. Okay, so we get a pair of parabolas that are kind of beside each other. This is a really unusual one uh, because they seem to have the same kind of steepness to them as well, which means they're actually only going to touch at one point. So this is kind of a more unique situation, but we have one point of intersection in this one. At least that's all I could find. Um, and to me, this looks like it's going to be the same slope. Uh, yeah, I think this is just going to be different heights, but I think it's going to be the same slope. If I had to guess. So I think it's only going to be one point of intersection. And that point, if you find it, should be just 3, 5. Okay, then check that. So in number 1, uh, we'll sub in the point 3, 5. So 2 times 5 squared minus 16 times 5, uh, minus 3, and see if that equals negative 35. Really, we should always be doing left side, right side checks when we're checking things. This is left side, this is right side, uh, because you cannot assume that they're equal. If you put an equal sign there, you might move things back and forth uh, across the equal sign, and that's absolutely not allowed. Um, by doing that, you could end up making a mistake, you make an assumption, and you could end up with all sorts of weird things. I didn't do that earlier when we were doing, say, this one. Um, this was technically improper. I shouldn't have used the equal sign there. The only reason I did it here is because it's such a simple equation that I'm really not tempted to move things across the equal sign. I knew I could solve it really, really quickly without having to bother with that. Um, that's why I did that there, but really it should be a left side, right side check every single time. So, solve that one, and then check number two. And in number two, it should be two times five squared, minus eight times five, minus three, and see if that equals negative 11. Uh, and that should indeed work as well, but check that for yourselves. Okay, I'm going to move on. Make sure you pause the video if you need more time. Okay, last question. Uh, this one takes a little bit long to read through, but I think I'll just cut to the basics. Uh, take a few seconds to read through this yourself if you want to. Pause it. Okay, so the general idea here is that a grader, one of our road engineer people, they're going to take a point that they have here and a point that they have here. And they know that there's kind of a big dip in the road and it kind of bottoms out down here. And they don't want it to be a V, of course. Uh, a V wouldn't be very nice. So what they do instead is they kind of connect these two points together with some kind of prevola, which doesn't quite bottom out at the bottom. Uh, you don't want it to be too high because that would cause a lot of building materials to be used. But obviously you cannot go all the way down because then it would be uh, too steep and too sharp uh, and you might not have room to build it anymore then. So you want some kind of a parabola that kind of gently connects those two points together to make nice smooth vertical curves in the road. Uh, and in this case, we have three different equations. So we have equation number one right here, which is a line, and that's our line going down. So that should be this guy right here. We have equation number two right here. And that again is a line, and that should be our line going up right here. And we have equation number three, which is our parabola. Okay. Um, and you can graph this if you don't really understand it, um, and that's always encouraged. Uh, you have your graphing calculator. It's a good tool to use. Basically, this one says there's a line going this way, there's a line going this way, and then there's a parabola going like this. I should use different colors. A little bit hard to see. So basically, we don't really care about any of this bottom stuff. We care about this parabola and these two lines. And we're going to be looking for the points here and here. Those are going to be the points that we care about. 
somewhere up on the lines. So write two systems of equations that can be used to find these points of tangency, they call them. A tangent means it touches once. Uh, so any kind of a curve that only touches a line once at one particular point, um, and we're going to be doing a lot with tangency in calc next year, uh, if you're taking calc. Uh, so find the points of tangency. That's just our points of intersection. So one system would be equation number one mixed with equation number three um, and find the POI there. And then our second one is going to be a system with equation two and equation three. Uh, and this is the line down. This is the line up. And these are the parabolas. So if we do the systems like that, we should be able to find those two points of intersection. Uh, determine the points of tangency graphically to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Uh, again, pause this. It probably is going to take about four minutes for you guys. Uh, but give this a try. I got the solutions as to the nearest how many? Hundredth? Negative uh, 6.67. And 3. And the other one is 10. 3.25. Okay. Uh, and interpret the points of intersection, the points of tangency. Um, the first one, I'm going to do this up here. This is where we want to start the curve. And the last one's where we want to end the curve. If we're building our curved roads, those are going to be the two points where we have starts and ends. Uh, and nowadays they can actually use quite a bit of um, mathematics when they're doing this road engineering because they all have really advanced uh, GPS systems so they can mark off the exact locations where they want these things to happen and kind of do the calculations all along with them. So it's actually not too bad. Okay, first lesson. I think there should have been nothing that scared you in this lesson. Um, maybe just testing whether you can use your graphing calculator well. Other than that, hopefully that was straightforward. Uh, and then tomorrow will be a bit longer and a bit harder where we try and do all this algebraically. Okay, so you still got lots of time. Um, you should be able to get through all these homework questions and have a fairly have a night to yourself. Okay, good luck.